Welcome back to Simple Life with Chris and Tara, and today we are refilling the E-Tank. Today I'm just going to show you my E-Tank setup, so this isn't necessarily a tutorial on how to build an E-Tank. I'm going to show you how my setup is and what I use and we'll go from there. As most of you are aware who are subscribed to our channel, we do a lot of cast iron things, cooking, restoring, hunting, uh, lots of stuff to do with cast iron. So today I was going to show you how I have evolved my e-tank set up to what it is today. I started with just a little tote and I cleaned them in that and now I've moved up to this and I'm just going to show you what kind of setup I have. So to start off, I have a 35 gallon plastic drum and I went ahead and drilled a hole in it and put my own spigot. I put a rubber washer on the inside and the outside so that I can drain it because I drain it about once a year just to get all the old water and gunk out of it. And inside for my sacrificial metal, I have a stainless steel drum out of a wash machine. Now it looks a little rusty because it's been in use. But, and I cut the bottom of it out and bent it out so whatever I put in here, it'll be deep enough for it to go. So I have my positive power cable is hooked up to the drum. And we'll hook our negative up to our hook where we'll hang our cast iron skillet or whatever we're cleaning at the time. Also, I went to Lowe's and picked up one of these furniture dollies and put, put it on here so I can move it around when I want to. Even when it's full, I can roll it out to where I'm going to open it and start dumping the nasty water out. Or I can just hook a hose to it. Most people use a battery charger. It has to be a manual, not an uh, automatic. But... I went through a couple of those and so I had one of my friends made me a power supply is what I use on mine. So I don't use a battery charger, I use this power supply, it has a little fan that this just kicks on and does the same thing but I can run this continuously and never have to worry about it burning up. So don't ask me how he did it somehow out of a computer. I didn't ask how he does it, but he made me one. I love it. And that's what I use. And then the wires just come out and that goes to the negative. This one goes to the positive. You want to make sure you have like a stainless steel hook, which I had to grind on mine to make sure it'll fit the handles over it. And I have another one. This one's a little bit shorter. I found that one a little bit longer. So, because you'll you'll find out that your water will slowly evaporate. So this get a little deeper down into the into the water once we fill it up. And the water will evaporate, but your super washing soda will never evaporate. So even if you have to add five gallons of water. You'll never have to add any more of this unless you drain it all out and start over. So what you use is Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda and you use one half cup per five gallons. So for 55 gallons, we use 11 half cups of the Super Washing Soda. And once you have that in there, you'll never have to add any more, like I said, unless you drain it out and clean it and start all over. So I'm gonna go ahead and and this now, this has been sitting out here, so it feels pretty good. And then we'll fill it up. So one, two, three. And here goes the last one. We had to open up another one because that one was empty. 
11. Now I got a couple chunks down there that were in the other one, so when I spray the water, I'll spray it on those to try and dissolve them all. So I actually wrote down on my little shelf here, so I always end up having to look it up, but it's one half cup per five gallon of water. Okay, you know, we have all our super washing soda in here. And now we just said water. And I guess I should have showed um, when I hung this drum in here, I just drilled, I went through these holes and I drilled a hole through here and I just used some plastic coated wire I had to, to hang it and just twisted it so I got it up to the height that I wanted. But it fit just about perfect down inside this. And then just use a two by four or whatever board you have across the top to suspend it. You, you don't want this to be metal. You want this part to be wood. I need to have a little bit longer one. Really, that one's kind of close. But. All right, now we're gonna fill it with the water. So, as far as finding one of these drums, um, I made a lot of trips to the appliance repair store, this local, and I just kept asking them um, if they ever got one in, if they would save it for me. You can use any, I mean, stainless is the best. You can use, you know, I've seen stain, sheets of stainless. People use different things. Some people, it don't have to be stainless, but this will last the longest in here because all your... They're going to want to rust, but stainless don't really rust, so that's where it's the best. But I've seen people use sticks of rebar down in there. I've seen people use cookie sheets. I've seen different things, but if you just have regular steel, it's going to rust and start to disintegrate, you know, way quicker than something like this. This has been in here for a couple of years, and it's still got a long ways to go. So, um I just wanted to say that, that that might be a place to to look to hunt one down. And so we're just going to want to fill this all the way to the top. Because like I said, it's going to evaporate over time. So another good thing about these holes that I drilled for this is kind of like an overflow. It's only going to let it get so full. And this is just out of my shop. I'm not too concerned. If, it, if for some reason it would freeze up this winter... I'm not really concerned, but it's it's never froze before. So I think being inside here, even though I don't really have heat going here in the winter, I'm, I'm not very concerned about it. So now we got our water filled up. We got our super washing soda in there. It's still not the cleanest, but um, way cleaner than it was when I cleaned it out. There was probably this much gunk sitting in the bottom when we cleaned it out. Now we just have to come up with our cast iron that we want to clean. So for this go around, I have this Lodge cast iron wok which these aren't super old or anything, but still kind of unusual anyway. You don't seem to see a ton of them around, at least not people using them. So I just want to put it through our hook, drop it down to the water, and then we want to flip on the power. I need to get a light over here so we can see what's going on. So we just turned it on, but as you can see, the bubble's already starting. So it's putting the electricity, which it's not going to shock you. As you can see, you can put your hand in the water. It's not, I know electricity and water don't mix, but in this case, it's okay. Um, so it's sending the current down through the pan and making all these little microscopic bubbles come off the pan it's going to pull off any rust any carbon anything that's on there so 
I'll leave it in here for a day or so and check it out. And um, it should just get stripped all the way down to cast iron and then we'll be able to season it up after that. Eventually this is probably get, it'll look like a root beer. It'll be just foam across here as this keeps going. So I have a plan, as you can see, my shop has a 220 outlet here, which this I'm thinking was for maybe a welder or I don't know if he had like a compressor or something plugged into that. But my goal is, so we have this, um, it was like a new electric oven. We had it as a spare for our, our other house, but I'm wanting to hook it up over there. That way I can have kind of a cast iron restoration set up going up here for doing my cast iron. I don't have to, when I'm seasoning them, it tends to smoke up the house a little bit and Karen's not crazy about the smell that it puts out sometimes. So if I could have that all going up here, it'd be a lot better. And plus you don't have to worry about it heating up your kitchen. And I think it'll work out good. And as you can see, I got the underneath here all full of Dutch ovens. And these are all mostly skillets. And so plenty of, plenty that needs to be gone through. Have all kind of goodies in here. I've got a here's an old Volarath chicken fryer. This is a whole set of single notch lodge um, skillets from. And this is a back. This is the Monday morning that they call it the backwards three, all the way up to the twelve. Um, I had them all done at one time, but in the course of us moving. I had them stored somewhere and they got wet and so I'm just going to go through and redo them all and some different lids and just all different. That's another set I believe of single notch lodge. I don't have the 10 and the 12 on that one though. Um, this is just a lot of various, here's some old spider kettles and got like an old lodge bean pot. Um, then just lots of, just lots of cast iron stuff that needs gone through. And over here I have some breadstick pan, I have an old mailbox. Um, just all kinds of different stuff. I used to have a booth and I had some of these in a the booth. Gym pans, corn hob pans, just all kinds of different I've slacked off of it quite a bit here since we moved, but try to get back into getting some of this stuff cleaned up at least, and maybe maybe then I can get rid of some of it. <laughs> well, you can see it's not even been five minutes yet, and it's already filled with foam on the top, so it's doing its job. If I can clean this, you can see it. Getting clean as we speak, and none of this stuff leaks or anything, so turned out just to be a pretty good setup. I mean, like I said, I started out with just a plastic tote with a 2x4 across it, and it worked, you know, just as well. The only disadvantage was the size limitations of um, the tote, so you can only fit a pan that's so big. And you have to make sure that your metal, you know, when you have your pan in there, it's got to have metal on both sides for it to work on both sides. And if your metal only went down so far and your pan hung down farther, that bottom half wouldn't get clean. It has to be, your sacrificial metal has to be the same depth as your pan for it to work correctly. So I'm thinking um, about doing another cast iron giveaway. I don't know if you all remember, but when we hit 500 subscribers, we gave away a cast iron skillet, and the winner was to Mac and Patty of Southern Blessed Homestead. They ended up winning it. And I'm thinking about doing another giveaway when we hit 5,000, so we're getting pretty close. I think we're at like 4.65, so 
now that we have the e-tank up and running again i want to go through my cast iron and try and find something and um i think when we hit 5,000, we'll do another giveaway and good luck and then we'll do the whole restoration process of that pan so you'll be able to see it before uh, what it looked like and then as we clean it and going through the whole going through the whole deal so i think that'll be something kind of fun to do and look forward to and hopefully we'll be at 5,000 before you know it all right guys well that's it for showing you my e-tank set up and getting it filled up so that'll do it for today Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. If you're into cast iron, let me know if it's something that you want to continue seeing on the channel. I know I had a few requests asking about it. And I'll give you an update later and show you what the walk looks like once we get it out of here. And that'll do it for today.